Good morning and welcome to the third Sunday of Easter here at Martin Luther Lutheran Church. I want to welcome you all and our online visitors. Uh, thinking for you too, just a very special welcome. Uh, just we love you and hold you all uh, in the care of the Lord through prayer. A couple of announcements. We want to give congratulations to Delyn, who is celebrating a birthday coming up this week, and uh, your family is providing the altar flowers for us today, and we are thankful to, uh, to them for that wonderful gift, and we're thankful to your mom for the wonderful gift uh, and dad that uh, they have given us in, in you. We are continuing to have services online. Uh, we, we know we're coming to the end of the governor's uh, uh, isolation uh, decree, but um, how we will re-engage into public remains yet to be seen. So we want you to know that we are uh, hoping for the best, we're planning for the worst. So we will always be here until it is safe to, uh, to get together, and we look forward to that day uh, more than any other. Vogation Sunday is uh, coming up in a couple of weeks. So we are taking the week of May uh, 10th through the 16th to hold up our businesses in special prayer. And if you are an owner or a manager of a business, uh, please go to churchonmain.org. There is a link there where you can give us the name and address of the business, and uh, we will visit that business in spirit. If it's safe to do so in person, we'll, we'll just do a drive-by prayer. But we want to hold your business up in prayer, and we pray for blessing. We pray for prosperity, and we pray for your business, a, a kingdom influence, uh, wherever it is that, uh, that you serve. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice, and we're glad in it. Let's turn our hearts to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Just a closer walk with Thee, grant it, Jesus, is my plea, daily walking close to Thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. strong Jesus keep me from all wrong I'll be satisfied as long as I walk let me walk close to thee just a closer walk with thee Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Through this world of toils and snares. If I falter, Lord. Life is old 
time for me will be no more. Guide me gently, safely o'er to thy kingdom shore, to thy shore. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to Thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Sunday of Easter. The first reading is from Acts chapter 2 verses 14a and 36 through 41. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness 
and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who, were, who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Today's psalm is from the 116th chapter, verses 1 through 4 and 12 through 19. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. And what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord and the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord. In your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 17 through 23. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the entire time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by obedience to the truth, for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but imperishable, through the living and abiding Word of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to, to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. 
but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose at that same hour and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God's grace and peace be with you, church. It's an amazing story we hear. It's the Easter night. The disciples are behind locked doors, living in fear. What a different perspective Jesus had on his death. Before he died, he said, Father, I'm about to enter into my glory. And he marched courageously. Oh, he prayed like the drops of like sweat, like blood pouring off of him. But he walked courageously because it was the will of the Father. Jesus had courage. So unlike the disciples. Remember who these disciples were. The, the 12, now Judas had already committed suicide by this time. There were only the 11 left. But the 11 the most experienced disciples the world has ever seen. They had the honor, the privilege, the, just the, the incredible grace of walking with Jesus for, through three years of ministry. They were the ones who saw him raise the dead back to life, open the eyes of the blind, open the ears of the deaf. He, they saw him uh, cure leprous. And they were the ones who were commissioned to go out and do what he had done. And they went out, oh, trepid, full of trepidation. But they went out and they came back so excited. Lord, even the demons were subject to us in your name. Oh, what they had experienced and what they saw under the cover of Jesus. But now their Lord and Savior, to their eyes of flesh, had been killed, crucified, laid in the tomb. And now his body on this Easter Sunday was gone and their minds were mystified. Jesus sought glory. The disciples sought safety. I hardly have a message for you today, except... Have we changed at all? Or are we still a church of God on earth that is more interested in being safe in the presence of darkness than being a greater danger to darkness? The call of Jesus Christ is not a call to be safe, but a call to out danger, danger. When will the church rise up to the standard of faith of Jesus Christ, who taking up his cross looked at you and I in our baptism and said, you take up your cross too. For when I've called you to follow me, I've called you to die, as Bonhoeffer so famously said. But are we not still a church more interested in our safety, our preservation, the perpetuation of the institution than the advancement of the kingdom of God over and against the powers of darkness, against the powers of sickness, against all the powers of hell. When will the church rise up? For those 11? Well, for the two, it happened on the road back from Emmaus. 
When the Lord Jesus Christ sides up against, against them, just as he comes up into our lives, he comes and walks next to us in ways that, that we can't even recognize him. But the, the issues of faith and, and love and the ultimate meaning of life become the issues of our heart. And suddenly the scriptures may be open to us and we, as we pour ourselves into the scriptures, the scriptures pour themselves into us and, and awaken the, 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 the intellect of the heart. And the heart begins to burn. It's a sign of the presence of the risen Jesus Christ. Oh, but those two, they were still looking for their safety. They got Jesus to come into the house with them. Oh, they were risky enough. Jesus might be a bad stranger after all, but they invited him in. And when he took the bread and broke, that is, when he became the host, not the guest in the house, but the host of the house, and he gave it to them, their eyes were mystically opened, and they saw him for who he was. But then he vanished from their sight. I've wondered why would he vanish precisely at that moment? Was it to stir the intrigue? Or was it that the very dangerous Lord, dangerous to darkness, recognized that this church was not ready for him? And so he left. Until that time that they were better prepared. Until that time ultimately when the Holy Spirit would come upon them and the church would then have the courage, the strength, and conviction of the Heavenly Father now implanted in them that they too would rise up to the level of danger that it will take to win this world for the kingdom of God in Jesus Christ. Today I pray for you. I just pray for you that your hearts will be troubled like the two, then like the eleven. Until that day in the troubling of your heart, you are willing, like them, to lay your safety aside, to lay the perpetuation of the institutions aside, and that you will take up your cross, and you will follow him into whatever darkness he leads you to the glory, the light of the Father. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May we join together in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you have given us your holy scripture that we may come to know you by what you have done and what you have promised to do for all humanity. Grant us faith to believe that the Bible is your inerrant word and by your indwelling Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds that we may behold wondrous things out of it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the word of God that became flesh and dwelt among us. On the road to Emmaus, you enlivened the hearts of the two travelers by your word, and you revealed yourself when you broke bread with them. O oh Lord, enliven our hearts by your living word. And may we truly sense your presence and the call to partake through your holy supper into the mission of the kingdom of light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Beloved Jesus, you have commanded us to go and make disciples. Place your saving gospel in our hearts and on our lips, that being strengthened by your word, we may do those works which you have given us to do with boldness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you have called us to be your church in this community. Help us to be the body of Christ, to be the proclaimers of the good news, to live abundant lives in service to you. We pray that you would sustain and guide all who are working to relieve the effects of the coronavirus. Grant us unity of heart and mind in Christ to care for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign Lord, protect the men and women serving in the armed forces of this nation. Yet grant them wisdom, courage, and strength to do that which is right, 
to fulfill their duty in ways that are in accordance with your will and your purposes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, hear our prayer for your servants who are ill, for whom we implore your help and mercy. We pray, Lord, for their restoration to health. And yet, Lord, many may remain ill. We pray, Father, that in their illness, they would become more dangerous to the kingdom of darkness than were they healed. We also pray for our children and our youth. We lift up our families to you, praying, Lord, for their safety and their well-being, but praying, Lord, that our homes and our families, our parents, our children, our youth, would be kingdom dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. Grant to them the fulfillment of their destiny and their call. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, Father, we take this moment to present to you the specific concerns that burden our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you that you have taught us what you would have us believe and do. Help us to keep your word in pure hearts so that we thereby may be strengthened in faith, perfected in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. To your most holy and precious name and the glory of the eternal kingdom, amen and amen. And at this time, as we make our way to the altar for the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, if you don't already have it prepared, we encourage you to pause the film, get yourself a little bit of wine or water and uh, some crackers or bread, and together we'll partake of the very living presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, who alone can save our sinful, lost hearts. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ the very Paschal Lamb, crucified for us, he who bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored us to everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we long magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And when they had supped, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as oft as you receive it, even unto my remembrance of you. Together we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
And now would you please take that time wherever you are, whether you're alone or with family or with that next door neighbor with whom you commune and um, in the love of Christ, present to one another the body of Christ given for you. And taking the wine or the water in the love of Christ for one another, offer to one another with the words, the blood of Christ shed for you.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. All glory to you, almighty God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, who alone had such bold, courageous audacity is to confront darkness in its darkest hour. And now by his dedication to you and by who he was as the very Son of God, the very obedient Son of God, he overcame that power of darkness. So by his body and blood now in us, Lord, strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. No.
grace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed, and you won't start now. Yo no. 